It's the holiday season and Blackstone has you covered with a delicious gourmet Christmas feast that serves eight people, all for under $75. Let's get started. We have all the ingredients to make an herb crusted pork loin, apple butter, Parmesan crusted potatoes, maple glazed winter vegetables, a kale salad, candied walnuts, and a maple shallot vinaigrette. Today we hit up our local Walmart and this is what we bought. Granny Smith apples, brown sugar, Parmesan cheese, apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, shallots, walnuts, dried cranberries, kale, brown mushrooms, butternut squash, acorn squash, parsnips, cornstarch, shredded Parmesan cheese, red potatoes, garlic, Italian parsley, thyme, rosemary, honey mustard, a pork loin, and then olive oil. Okay, let's get this Christmas feast started. First, we're gonna make the apple butter. We're starting with this because it's gonna take the longest. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is take about three pounds of Granny Smith apples. They don't have to be Granny Smith apples. They can be Honeycrisp, Fuji apples, just really an acidic apple. And we're gonna quarter it. We're gonna leave on those skins and the core with the seeds in there. Those skins and the core, they have pectin in them that we wanna release when we boil the, the apples. Put them in a pot and then cover them with a, a cup and a half of water and three quarters of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Then we're gonna boil the apples for about 20 minutes or so until they're soft. The skins, uh, they kind of go from a vibrant green to more of like a yellow. And we're gonna remove it from the heat and then we're gonna take a bowl and a fine mesh sieve and we're gonna just press the apples through it until we get kind of an apple sauce underneath. Once you pass the apples through the fine mesh sieve and you have that apple sauce, we are going to put it back in the pot. We're gonna add a few cups of brown sugar, pinch of salt, and then we're gonna add it right back to the range. And we're gonna simmer it on lowest heat for about two hours, stirring occasionally so it doesn't burn. And then we're gonna have this thick, jammy, delicious apple butter. Feel free to use it with English muffins, pancakes, or any of your favorite breakfast food. But right now, it's the perfect accompaniment for this hearty pork loin. It'll really just set it over the edge, make it a real gourmet treat. Let's get to the star of the show. You know, pork loin, it's so delicious, it's tender, it's so versatile as well, and it's very cheap. You know, we can get a, a four pound pork loin roast for about $10. We're just gonna dress this up and make it really, you know, gourmet. It'll really impress your guests, your family, whoever you're having over for Christmas. We're gonna take our thyme, rosemary, and Italian parsley. We're gonna mince that up, chop it up as finely as we can. Set that aside, mince up five, six cloves of garlic. Put that together with the herb mix. And now this is gonna be very fragrant, very herbaceous. And then we're gonna take our pork loin out of the package, take a few of those paper towels, pat it dry. That'll just help the crust and it'll also help the salt, the pepper, and all the herb bind to the, the surface of the pork loin easier. Now that we've patted that pork loin dry, we're gonna season it very heavily with salt and pepper. Make sure you turn over the pork loin, get all sides of it, get all the edges in there. Once it's completely seasoned, we're going to take our honey mustard, squirt some of that on there, throw in our gloves, and then we're gonna rub that honey mustard all over the pork loin. The honey mustard is gonna act as a binder for our herb mix that we had earlier, and it also gives some a little bit of sugar and a little bit of acidity, just some added flavor that'll help develop that crust. Once we've added the mustard to the pork loin and it's completely covered, we're gonna take that herb mix from earlier and then rub it completely over the pork loin. Now that our pork loin's completely prepped, we're gonna fire up our griddle to medium-high heat. We'll drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the, the griddle top, and then we're gonna throw down that pork loin. We're gonna sear it on each side for about six to seven minutes until a very thick crust is developed. After we've seared the pork loin on each side, we're gonna set it on a rack, close the lid of our griddle, and then we're just gonna let it bake for about an hour, 45 minutes or so, just until it hits 150 degrees internally. Let's make the Parmesan potatoes. Let's take five pounds of red potatoes. We're just gonna cut them into quarters. And then we're gonna throw them in a big stock pot and boil them until they're about fork tender. We'll boil them for about 20 minutes. Once we boil the potatoes, we're gonna strain them off and put them on a large sheet pan to cool off for just a second. Then we'll take the potatoes, put them in a bowl, and toss them in cornstarch, salt, and pepper. Toss them around until all the surfaces of the potatoes are completely coated. We're gonna throw down the potatoes next to that pork loin and then throw down a generous amount of olive oil to shallow fry the bottom of those potatoes. Once the potatoes have crisped up on all sides, we're going to add our garlic, shallots, and our Parmesan cheese. And then we're gonna mix that all up together until the, the garlic and the shallots are very fragrant and the Parmesan is crispy and melted and covering the potatoes. We'll toss them with parsley and then we'll keep these potatoes warm until we're ready to serve. Finally, let's get to the roasted vegetables. We're gonna take a butternut squash. Don't be intimidated. These are really easy to trim. We're gonna take a nice peeler, uh, just kind of like one you would use for potatoes. And then we're gonna set down the squash. We'll peel off all the skin. We'll set it down, split off both ends of it. And then we're gonna split it right down the middle in half. 
We'll kind of cut it into strips and then we'll dice it into about one inch cubes. We'll set that off to the side and then we'll start on the parsnips. Parsnips, they're just like carrots. They're a little starchier, yeah, they look different, but we'll peel them just like a carrot, take off the ends, and then we're just gonna kind of cut them in alternating chunks. You can also do coins. We're gonna keep the parsnips and the butternut squash together in this bowl. Next, we're gonna do the acorn squash. Acorn squash, not a lot of people use to cook, but I think it's really delicious. It's kind of sweet. It almost smells like a honeydew when you cut it open. Take a spoon, scoop out those guts, and then just we're gonna cut it into little strips. The, the skin on it, don't worry about peeling it off. It gets, you can eat it, it's very tender, it has a lot of flavor to it. We're actually gonna throw the acorn squash into the salad we're making. So now that we've got all of our squash and our parsnips cut, we're gonna do the mushrooms. These are just brown button mushrooms. We've got one pound of them. We're gonna split them into quarters and then we're gonna set those off to the side. Now that we have all of our vegetables prepped and cut and ready to go, we're gonna to turn to our griddle. We'll have that on medium heat and then we're gonna throw down a generous amount of olive oil. We're gonna throw down our parsnips and butternut squash separately from the acorn squash. We're gonna cook the butternut squash and the parsnips for about 25 minutes or so, just until the edges are seared and the inside is very, very tender. Seasoning occasionally with salt and pepper. The acorn squash, we're gonna pull off a little earlier and we're just gonna keep that for the salad. As soon as the squash and the parsnips are completely cooked, we're gonna take our mushrooms. We're adding those at the very end because they take the least amount of time to cook and we don't want them to overcook. And then we're going to add a handful of fresh thyme and minced garlic. Cook that up for another minute or so, and then we'll add a glug of maple syrup, make sure everything gets glazed, and then we're gonna remove it from the griddle and get everything ready to serve. Oh, that looks really good. Now let's get to the vinaigrette. This is one of my favorite things to put on a salad. It's just a perfect incorporation of winter flavors. It's really simple. First, we're gonna slice up a few shallots and a couple cloves of garlic. I remember plenty of times sitting in front of a mandolin, peeling and slicing shallots for hours on end before I would work my saute station. I'm kind of over that by now. Drizzle olive oil and then throw down our garlic and shallots. We're gonna caramelize that for about five, seven minutes until they're kind of breaking down, releasing some of their natural sugars. And then we'll remove them from the griddle with our spatulas. Over here we have our food processor. We're gonna take our caramelized shallots and garlic, put that in the food processor with some olive oil, honey mustard, some fresh thyme, salt and pepper, and then some apple cider vinegar. We're just gonna plug this in and then blend it up until we have an emulsified vinaigrette. Take a taste, adjust it for seasoning, maybe a little more salt if that's your preference. And then we'll set this aside for later for when we're dressing the salad. We're gonna make a really quick candied walnut for our salad. It's really easy, don't be intimidated, it'll take you about five minutes. So first, we're gonna take a nonstick skillet, the biggest one that you have. If you don't have a black stone with a range top, just set it right on the griddle top on a medium heat. We're gonna add two tablespoons of butter, two thirds of a cup of brown sugar, two cups of walnuts, and then a pinch of salt. And then we're gonna take a heat safe spatula and just stir that around until that brown sugar and the butter starts to melt and create caramel to coat the walnuts. And then we're just gonna cook that for about five minutes. It'll start to smell kind of nutty and, and really Really fragrant. As soon as it's caramelized and completely coated, you're gonna take a sheet pan lined with parchment paper and just pour it right on there, lay it out with that heat safe spatula, then we'll just put it aside to cool till we're ready to serve the salad. Let's build our salad. Take the largest salad bowl you have in your kitchen, then we're gonna empty our bag of kale into that. Now that we have our kale in the bowl, we're gonna top it with the acorn squash we roasted earlier, the candied walnuts, dried cranberries, then we're going to take our wedge of Parmesan cheese, a peeler, and then we're just gonna shade the Parmesan directly over the top of the salad. After you've set the table, all that's left is to gather your loved ones to share this delicious meal. Christmas shouldn't be stressful, and these dishes are sure to impress your friends and family. So give them a try this holiday season, or next time you wanna throw a dinner party or impress your guests. Let us know if you learned anything in this video, and let me know down in the comments if you made any of these dishes. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.